what are all these words trying to tell me? We're going to break down the exclusive buyer broker agreement so that it actually makes sense in your head. Okay, so this is a legal document. I highly suggest that you read through all of it if you fully don't understand, especially if your brain works that way. I'm just trying to help people that maybe reading through this, it doesn't sound like normal English, so it makes more sense to you. <laughs> So section one is the term of agreements. This does not say that you have to buy a house. It's just saying if you do buy a house, you agree to work with me, we'll agree how long to make that. And really you can fire me if I'm not doing my job. I've never been fired. And I hope that I'm your realtor for life. <laughs> section two is the brokerage fees. This basically breaks down how I'm gonna get paid. You will pay the dollar amount. That's for paperwork, title, and my transaction coordinator to make sure everything's on track. The percentage is usually paid by the seller, which they've already put into the MLS. If it's for sell by owner, I'll negotiate that for you. Uh, if they're not willing to, we'll somehow add that on top, but that can come later on in the transaction. <laughs> Section three is the protection period. Basically just saying, if you go somewhere else and I showed you a house, you end up buying that house, it protects me for a certain amount of time. Section four, super simple, too big of a paragraph, just saying that I'm your only agent and I'm the only one serving you, you're not working with another agent. Number five is agency relationships. This is basically my promise to you. As your agent, I am promising you loyalty, obedience within the law, full disclosure, confidentiality, and reasonable care. I am promising to put your interest first. Section 5.2 talks about limited agency. This is when an agent is allowed to represent the buyer and the seller. Utah law allows this, but it only happens in certain situations. Section six, this is just letting you know that I am a realtor. I know how to market and negotiate. I'm not a professional tax advisor. I'm not a professional plumber. I'm not a professional inspector. You should get those things done by a professional. Section seven, basically saying if there was a dispute to come up, there never has been, then we can go to mediation because we can't solve it like grown adults. <laughs> Section eight basically is saying if we were to go to mediation, the prevailing party could be entitled to the fees and attorney costs of the other party. Section nine basically says that we can hold earnest money in an interest bearing account, making it possible for affordable housing in Utah and to disclose to the MLS of the sale after the transaction and to keep in touch with you during and after the sale. Section 10 talks about the due diligence, which is another form coming up. Section 11, equal housing, saying that we will comply with fair housing laws. Section 12, maybe one of my favorite sections, saying that we can sign things electronically. Yay! Section 13, saying basically that the seller has to pay off their current mortgage. This really has to come into play if you're dealing with seller financing. Section 14 is the entire agreement, basically saying that I provided you the due diligence checklist, wire fraud, alert disclosure, and any other additional addendums that we agree to. If it's to change, it will be changed in writing. Uh. Section 15, effective date. The date that this goes into place. Again, this is a legally binding contract, so make sure you read everything before you sign. If you have questions and don't understand something, Please call me, contact me, text me, and I'll answer them in more detail. Thanks for watching. I'm Jordan Wheeler, Utah's favorite video realtor. <laughs>